For the Atlanta Braves, the magic number is down to two. Today, they try to clinch another divisional title against the Montreal Expos. Hi, everybody. Pete Van Wehr along with Joe Simpson welcoming you to Atlanta. Braves trying to do it again today as they meet the Expos in game four of this series. And Joe, for a lot of the members of the Atlanta Braves, for some members of the Atlanta Braves down in that dugout, it will be a first-time experience. But for others, this is a day in September they've come to expect. Yeah, and I think maybe a little bit later this year than they thought it was going to happen, Pete. But certainly they can win it this year and join some very select company in the major leagues. In fact, they would become the first National League team to ever win five consecutive championships. The New York Yankees have done it twice. The Oakland A's with those white shoes and the leadership of Dick Williams certainly did it back in the early 70s. But the, the Braves would be the first National League club to do it. And today they'll have their ace on the mound, John Smoltz. This is a quality matchup. John Smoltz and Jeff Facero going at it. Facero has 15 wins. Smoltz with 22, as you know. They're among the leaders in several different uh, pitching categories in the National League and uh, runs are going to be very tough to come by. In fact today Felipe Alou normally puts a defensive club behind Facero. He's thinking more offense today to try to generate some runs. Smoltz trying to match Phil Necro's 23 win record for Atlanta trying to break Phil Necro's 262 strikeout record needs just one strikeout to do that. We'll be back with all the action from Atlanta right after this. Welcome back to Atlanta. Beautiful day for baseball for game four of this series between the Braves and the Expos. Here's the Mikeadon starting lineup for Felipe Alou today. Grizzolanic, Lansing, Segui, and Alou. The top four all the same, but the addition of Henry Rodriguez in left field. Vladimir Guerrero is going to play center today, and F.P. Santangelo at third base instead of Shane Andrews gives you the idea that indeed Felipe Alou is trying to get a little more offense working today. Defensively for the Braves in the outfield, changes there too. Jermaine Dye and Andrew Jones will play today with the left hander pitching. Klesko gets a rest and welcome back Jeff Blauser back to the starting lineup. Blauser went on the disabled list in mid July with a broken bone in his hand. He's back in there today for the first time since Chipper Jones will move over to third base and give Terry Pendleton the afternoon off. John Smoltz 22 and 8. He'll keep try to keep up with whatever what all the other starters have been doing including John who pitched a great ball game in his last start against Houston winning five to four. He went eight strong innings three runs allowed one walk and he had seven strikeouts. Ed Mangan's crew having to dry out the area in front of home plate which he normally saturates before a day game and apparently for Jim Quick the crew chief for this umpiring crew it was too wet so he's asking Ed and one of his assistants put down some of the diamond dry agent to try to uh, soak up some of that moisture. John Smoltz is on the mound making his 34th start of the year. Six complete games, two shutouts. This year against the Expos will be making his, his actually this will be his first appearance against Montreal. Lifetime six and six against them but 0 oh and three here in Atlanta. So he'll try to get that turned around today. And as you said Pete. Not only is it a day where the Braves can join uh, some select company in terms of championships, but also for John Smoltz some milestones as well, joining uh, Phil Necro. I think those are great numbers. Just one more strikeout to, to break his record. Yeah, it could be a great day for John. He's already set a record this year for most consecutive wins ever by a Braves pitcher. He's won 14 straight. You see, he's got 262 strikeouts. Phil Necro set that record with Atlanta back in 1977. So one strikeout today. He's got that mark. If he wins today he's got 23 wins which would match Phil Necro's record in 1969 so a lot riding on this one start by John Smoltz and what better thing to shoot for besides personal goals and also a chance to clinch a championship in a division for your team with all the other things he's accomplished this year just another feather in his cap if he can do it. Mark Rizzolanic set to lead things off Gary Darling Charlie Relaford Jim Quick and Dana DeMuth are your umpires today and Rizzolanic will step in batting 312 with six homers 46 runs driven in. He has gone five out of 15 in the series. Another sellout crowd today and we are underway in a beautiful afternoon. A call strike in the inside corner. Nothing in one. Seventy six degrees at game time. Very low humidity. The 0 1. Pop foul back out of play. Nothing in two. The count on Grizzolanic. Mike Lansing will follow, then David Segui.
Here's the 0 2 on the way, and there's a soft liner foul off to the right. And it's still nothing in two on Grizzlenic. Several things working in John's favor today. Not only is he having a great year overall, but he's 12 and 3 at home and 7 and 2 in day games. Maybe that'll all add up to a clincher today. Here's the 0 2, and it's upstairs. One ball, two strikes. Now the one two pitch coming and there it is strikeout number two hundred sixty three on the season a new Atlanta record for John Smoltz breaking Phil Necro's mark of two sixty two set back in nineteen seventy seven and John Smoltz wants that baseball for his trophy case he was well aware of what that strikeout would mean two hundred sixty three strikeouts on the year for John Smoltz didn't waste any time did he. Good slider, tight breaking slider that started at the corner, moved off the plate a little bit, and Grizzlanic couldn't stop. Now Mike Lansing batting 291, 11 homers, 52 RBIs. Drills this one in the left field. Jermaine Dye started in, now reaches up, makes the grab two down. And that'll bring up David Segui. When John Smoltz got his 262nd strikeout in his last start, he was unaware that he had tied Phil Necro's record, but that was the last strikeout he got in the game, so he's had four days to yep. think about <laughs> the fact that one morning he had a new mark. He knew right away that he had set a new standard here in Atlanta. Sagi, 285, nine homers, 54 RBIs. He's had four RBIs in the series. And knowing John, had he known that against Houston, he'd have gone back out there for the ninth inning just to get the record. He might have. Two outs, base is empty. One ball, no strikes on Sagi. The 1 0 pitch. One ball, one strike. He's had a good series, but he had, was swinging the bat pretty well coming into this series. In that he was getting on base, maybe not with base hits, but now it has 13 walks in his last 10 games, so he's been very selective. Now the 1-1 one -one on the way. Has to pitch out of the strike zone. One ball, two strikes. Two pitch on the way, and it's low for a ball, two and two. You could measure exactly how far in front of home plate that one bounced because it left the mark in that drying agent that Ed Mangan had to spray. Oh, there you can see. <laughs> what is that, about three feet? Now get the tape measure out on that. <laughs> Repair your ball marks. Two balls, two strikes. The 2 2 on the way almost hit him. 3 and 2. Boys and Salou waiting on deck. Now a 3 2 pitch on the way, and he walked him. Sagi down to first with a two out walk. And that'll bring up Moises Salou. Batting 284, 21 homers, 94 RBIs. Salou only three for 20 in his career against John Smoltz. Montreal realizing they're all but out of the race to win the National League East, but very much alive in the wild card race. They're only a game behind San Diego in that race. That's what they're gunning for. That'll be out of play to count on one. 
It's really a two team battle. It looks like Colorado is just about out of it. And it's between Montreal and San Diego right now. They're dead even in the loss column. Montreal has two more games to play than does San Diego. And San Diego with another game today with the Dodgers. Los Angeles making life miserable for them. And the seats nothing in two now on Moises Alou. Padres closed the season at LA as the Expos are hosting Atlanta. Here's the 0-2 pitch, a little bit high, one ball, two strikes. Where was it? About belt high, outside third of the plate. Runner gets a big jump. They've got him. Smoltz. Was he called for a balk? He yes. was called for a balk by second base umpire Jim Quick. Well, if Quick hadn't gotten him, Relaford would have at first. They both threw their arms up. Land or Segui rather took off before John broke from his stretch and must have flinched a little bit before he stepped off. Yes. His upper body twisted just a little bit. And that was a good call. So Segui winds up at second with two outs. The count remains of ball and two strikes on a loo. File back, still one and two. First ball, John has committed this year. If he steps off first, then makes that move, they had David Segui caught between first and second. But he moved first, then stepped off. Too much time taken. Alou steps out. Two balls, two strikes on Moises Alou. John breezing through the first couple of hitters. Looked like he was going to get Segui after he jumped ahead of him in the count. Lost him to the free pass. And now trying to be very careful here that he doesn't give up a two out hit to a loop. Here's the two two on the way. Foul back. It stays two balls two strikes. Braves are six and two against the Expos this year. Another game with Montreal tomorrow night final home game of the regular season in this ballpark. Greg Maddox against Mark Leiter. It's going to be a very memorable evening here in Atlanta. Pre game and post game ceremonies featuring many former players. Strike three called outside corner. Alou caught looking. Second strike out of the game for Smoltz and every strike out from here on out adds to John's Atlanta record. Nothing doing for the Expos in the top of the first. No score. Expos failed to score in the top of the first inning. Here's the lineup for Bobby Cox this afternoon. Grissom, Andrew Jones, Chipper Jones, and McGriff. Javi Lopez will bat fifth today, followed by Jermaine Dye and Jeff Blauser. Welcome back to the lineup, Jeff. Then Lemke, then the National League, or the Atlanta Braves single season strikeout leader, John Smoltz. There's your defensive alignment for the Expos. Our graphics department got to use every letter they owned putting up that one. <laughs> yeah, Some they, long names they in that ran defense. Out. Jeff Vassero on the mound. He is one tough customer. 33 years old, 6'1, 195, makes his home now in Brownsburg, Indiana. Lifetime 3 and 4 record against Atlanta, but a good ERA of 2.52. Here's Marquise Grissom at 303, taking the first pitch low, ball one. Grissom now at 198 hits for the year, just too shy of his 200 hit goal. Got a six game hitting streak working. Fly ball hit out to center field. Vladimir Guerrero starting in center today makes the catch one down. Jeff Vassero fastball slider fork ball. He started off in the Cardinals organization was a 22nd round pick by St. Louis in 84. Then went to the White Sox when he was claimed in a minor league draft released by the White Sox signed by the Indians. 
signed by the Expos as a minor league free agent. This is a guy that really hadn't done much until he came to Montreal and then didn't become a starter until 1993. And he has certainly made up for lost time there. One of those late bloomers. Andrew Jones, 224, five homers, nine RBIs, takes a strike of the knees, 0 1. One down the third baseline. That's a fair ball headed toward the left field corner. Rodriguez over toward the corner as Jones takes the turn at second. Now we'll go back. Rodriguez finally getting the ball back to the infield. A one out double for Jones. His sixth two base hit of the season. I just love watching him run, Pete. This ball just down the line past Santangelo. Maybe one of the changes that Felipe Alou already. Coming back to haunt him a little bit defensively. And after Rodriguez had a little trouble with it, the thing about Andrew is right there, he has that extra gear. If he needs it, he can turn on the Jets, and it's really fun to watch him run. Now, Chipper Jones hitting 313, 30 homers, 109 runs driven in. Back at third base in the lineup today. Files off the first one, 0 and 1. Interesting to see today how Chipper reacts to moving back to third base. If he has any problems. Going to be a quicker reaction for him over there. Terry Pendleton getting a day off today. Here's the one strike delivery, and it's low one ball, one strike. Facero's numbers and John Smoltz's are very comparable. Facero has not worked as many innings, but they've both walked the exact same number of hitters, 53 on the year. John's worked 241 innings, Facero 223. One's allowed 18 home runs, Facero's allowed 16. There's the 1-1 one, one on the way. Anthony's for a call, strike one and two. Interesting note from Phil Sivens here, Pete. All nine of Andrew Jones's hits off left-handed batters have been for extra bases. Hmm. Three doubles, a triple, and five homers. He is the runner at second with one out. Here's the one-two. Struck him out. Got the fastball by him. Chipper down swinging. Two down. That'll bring up Fred McGriff. Here it is again. Kept it low. He had the plate. That is strikeout number 216 on the air for Facero. And he's fourth in the league in that category. McGriff finishing strong up to 296 for the year now. 28 RBIs. He's tied his career high with a or 28 home runs rather. He's tied his career high with 106 RBIs. This one to second right hand Lansing. And Facero is out of the inning. So the double to Jones is all he allows. No runs, a hit, one left, no score after one. Next to the last game here at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. Before we get to the second inning, let's take a look at the Hardy's leaderboard this afternoon. Subject, the National League strikeout leaders. That includes two strikeouts today for John Smoltz and one for Jeff Facero. Separated only by Nomo and Pedro Martinez of the Expos. No score as we go to the top of the second. Henry Rodriguez leads it off. 278, 35 homers, 99 RBIs. Has gone two for two in this series. Couple of pinch hits, both off Mark Wollers. Comes up empty on the first swing, 0 and 1. Rodriguez just one RBI shy of 100. The last Expo to drive in over 100 runs, Tim Wallach, back in 1987. Certainly a who's who list among former Expos, including one of their broadcasters, Ken Singleton, who's working today. But if you had asked me to guess who had the all-time high, I'm afraid I wouldn't have guessed Tim Waller. 
He had a great year. It's sort of an Expo Hall of Fame list right there. Yes, it, it is. One ball, one strike on Rodriguez. Most make it into the seats of the cab one and two. The most home runs Rodriguez hit even in the minor leagues was 28 in the Dodger organization at San Antonio. And of course really never got much of a chance to play every day until this year. Most at bats he had had in the big leagues was 94 with the Dodgers. He had 306 at bats and eight home runs that year. Here comes the one two on the way. Did he go. They appealed the third. Yes he did. Strikeout number three for John Smoltz out number one here in the top of the second. So far the Expo is not too happy with the umpiring. He definitely went. Moise Salou did not like the called third strike on him to end the first inning. That adds to Rodriguez league leading total. He has struck out 152 times this year. One out now the 20 year old youngster Vladimir Guerrero hit his first major league home run in the ninth inning here last night. He has been put right into action by Felipe Alou. He has started all four games in this series. Hitting 360 at double A this year, 363 at the Class A level, a combined 24 home runs for West Palm Beach and Harrisburg. Down in the count, nothing in two. He has yet to strike out in his 13 major league at bats. Wow, back still 0 and 2. Really can generate some bat speed. That home run he hit last night, just a flip of the wrist, got the head of the bat in the right spot, took Mark Wolders the other way. The 0 2 pitch on the way grounds a breaking ball to third. Chipper Jones fields across to first in time. He had to reach for that pitch. Two men down. Yeah, you want to see some plate coverage. One of the reasons he's not striking out is that he seems to be able to reach anything. Look how far this ball is outside. And still is able to roll out there over the top of it and pull it. That'll bring up third baseman F.P. Santangelo having a good solid year at 281. With seven homers, 56 RBIs, he's been Felipe Alou's handyman. He's played in the infield, he's played in the outfield. And he takes a strike on one. Low one ball, one strike. Two and one, the count on Santangelo. Into right center field. That's going to drop in for a base hit. Andrew Jones will get it back to the infield. First hit allowed by Smoltz. And Santangelo aboard with two outs for Lenny Webster. First time he's faced John Smoltz, and it's a good trip to the plate for him. Webster catching the third game in this four game series. He always catches Jeff Facero. Hitting 226, couple of home runs, 16 RBIs, only one for three in the series, but he has walked three times. It's interesting how it's all worked out, Pete. Bobby uh, certainly reluctant to talk about what, how he would set up his rotation, especially since he's not sure when the Braves are going to clinch, and then if they, when they did, who they would play. However, if John Smoltz is the choice for Game One, regardless of the opponent, the rotation is set up perfectly for him. He'll pitch again on Friday at Montreal, 
And the playoffs are expected to start on Wednesday. That's another perfect start for him in terms of four days yeah, rest in four between. Four days rest. There's a strike. It's one on one. The way the rotation has fallen right now, getting Steve Avery back into it and Denny Nagel joining the club, the Braves in a situation where they have three straight left-handers going, with uh, Avery, Nagel, and Glavin following one another. I don't think the postseason rotation will be set up. I think it's going to be more of a righty-lefty, righty-lefty. If it's a four-man rotation, with one of the left-handers going to the bullpen. Mm -hmm. And maybe even in that five game series, two guys going to the bullpen possibly. possibly. Over to first and back safely is Santangelo. Good move by John there. It's tough to steal on. He's got a quick move to the plate, he's got a decent move to first to keep you honest. Louis Pujols, the coach over at first base for the Expos. And if you're Fred McGriff, you become a catcher over there because John doesn't lob anything to first. Got the high fastball by him, one and two, the count on Lenny Webster. Stairs two and two. Expos have sort of changed their mood about this whole series. They came in a five game series. At the time, they had a chance to really gain some ground on Atlanta. And they won the first game, of course, then have lost the next couple. So when they first started this series, it was, we think we can catch the Braves. Now the mood is, we don't want them to clinch it against us. Strike three called. Fourth strike out of the game for John Smoltz. He gives up his first hit, F.P. Santangelo's single. We go to the bottom half of the second, no score. No scores. We go to the bottom half of the second inning on a sun drenched Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. This telecast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Atlanta National League Baseball Club and is intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission of the pictures or descriptions of this game without the express written consent of the Atlanta National League Baseball Club is prohibited. The King! The King <laughs> is here for the farewell appearance. Uh, hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, baby. Javi Lopez leading off here in the bottom of the second. Jermaine Dye will follow, and then Jeff Blauser gets back into action. I think he was here last week when the Pirates were here also. Jeff King was playing his favorite player. Lopez the hero here two nights ago. Eddie Perez his backup was the hero here last night. So Braves catchers have done the job the last two victories over Montreal. Fouls the first one back the count 0 and 1. Former Braves players from all over filtering into town today to be a part of the stadium finale tomorrow night. Won't be the last game ever played here, of course, because of postseason, but it's the last regular season game. And we want to remind those of you who will not be in attendance to get a cassette ready for your VCR. We're going to have a special tribute at the end of tomorrow night's telecast, which will have a lot of rare footage, historic moments from the stadium. It'll be a keepsake for. All of you Braves fans. Here's the 0-2. Inside one and two. I'm going to get a copy of that myself. Yes, yes, sir. Good stuff. And as you know, any retransmission, rebroadcast without the express written consent. <laughs> Here's the one-two on the way now to Lopez. Fouls it back, still a ball and two strikes. Jeff Facero pitched against Atlanta earlier this year. 
On July 16th, he left with a 2 nothing lead. He had worked seven innings, had walked one, struck out seven. But Mel Rojas blew it. He got no decision. And the center field, that's going to fall in, base hit. Good start to the bottom of the second for Atlanta as Lopez reaches. And that'll bring up Jermaine Dye. What a sweet swing that was. The one thing when you watch the replay of this, watch his head stay down on the ball. Great extension, hit the ball out in front, but his head stayed right on that low pitch. Boy, was that pretty. Textbook stuff right there, Hobby. Jermaine Dye at 290 for the year with 11 home runs, 36 RBIs. Foul home run distance though. Got nothing in one. You probably are aware of the fact that Jermaine dies since coming up from Richmond has been living at Marquise Grissom home. And what better role model for a young player than Marquise? A recent article, I think it was in today's paper, an article on Marquise Grissom talking about his work habits. Had one of the great lines that I've ever seen a player give. He said, The reason I work so hard every day is because when I'm all through playing this game, I don't want to say if I only had worked a little harder, I might have had a better career. And there's there's not very many guys that can say that. No. You know, there, there's some guys that get in some spots sometimes. More the guys. Coast. More guys say the reverse when they're through playing. They're yeah. saying, "Man, if I could go back and do it again, I would have worked a little harder." Yeah. But not Marquise, and that's the example that Jermaine Dye sees each and every day. Well, I I did back-to-back -back interviews with him for the radio on consecutive days because I wanted their impression of each other. And I talked to Jermaine first and the thing that he said to me was you know he said the first thing is I didn't want to impose on Marquise because it was Olympics time that it's hard to find a place to live. He said hey come stay with me no problem. He said so I did and he said and I've learned so much from him not only about what's going on on the field how to get ready to face a certain pitcher but how to take care of myself how to conduct myself off the field as well and, and again what a great role model to have. Here's the 0 2. Ford second might be two. Lansing, Grids Atlantic, on to Segui, double play. That takes care of the base runner. Two men gone. And the batter will be Jeff Blauser, his first time back since July 15th, when he was hit by a Jeff Juden pitch facing the Expos. He's he gets a warm welcome, too. He's been down in the instructional league for the last few days, playing down there, getting some at bats and some. Innings in the infield, and he's been hitting the ball very solidly. There are his numbers on the year. And now he's going to have about a 10 day stretch to get ready for postseason. First pitch swinging, fouls it off to the right. Talk about another guy with a little better appreciation for what he's got here. I talked to him before the game today, and he said, You know, every one of us ought to go down there and spend a few days in that environment. He said because it is a real eye opener there are some hungry players down there some real good guys and maybe we think we've got it too good up here at times. Nothing in two the count on Jeff. He said you, you forget a little bit about how much work it takes to get here and you get a little complacent. He said it was a real eye opener for me and certainly makes me appreciate it a lot more. Now Facero deals the 0 2 and that's upstairs one ball two strikes. No score. We're in the bottom half of inning two. Got that protective device on his left batting glove to protect his hand. And the one-two offering. Strike three called. Blauser caught looking. Facero has his second strikeout. That's all for Atlanta in the second. Well, we expected a low scoring contest. So far, we've got one. No score after two. Pitcher Jeff Facero leads off here in the top of the third, 097 on the year. Six out of 62. He takes ball one. We are scoreless. 62 at bats, 31 strikeouts for Facero. So he has fanned exactly one half of his at bats. One ball, one strike. Pretty stiff breeze blowing now here at the stadium. One and two. Phil Simmons and I were noticing 
during the pregame festivities with the color guard on the field at the flags at the top of the stadium were starts out toward right field but on the field the flags were blowing in from the right field foul pole yeah, it swirls in a circular ballpark like this and let's see in exactly 10 minutes it will be autumn feels like it two o'clock this afternoon Eastern time is transition of seasons 2 2 pitch. That's it for Passero. That's strikeout number five for Smoltz. Now, who's this guy Vernon Equinox? They named that after. <laughs> there you see the flags blowing out toward right center field. And we go back to the top of the order. Mark Rizalanik, a strikeout victim and an historic one in the first inning. He became strikeout victim number 263 for John Smoltz, setting a new Atlanta record. Strikes. Two and another count. What a festive mood around the press box this morning, wasn't it? I mean, how often has it occurred that Cornell and Missouri won on the same day? And Nebraska lost. Did they ever? Two and one. Glenn Diamond, the old San Diego State Aztec, down in the truck, rubbing it in on this sooner too. Here's the two-one pitch on the way, and that's low. The count three and one. One man out, base is empty here in the top of the third. Out of play, full count three and two. Good fastball for John today. I there have been a couple of starts where he didn't have much to work with, scuffled his way through a start, but I don't know that I can recall a start at any time during the year, Pete, where he didn't have good velocity and good movement on his fastball. Here's the three two now to Grids Olenek. Right back to Smoltz. An easy out, two gone. And that'll bring up Mike Lansing. Now he's had a very consistent year. And this would be a capper for him if he could win this one today. That would tie Phil Necro's season high, 23 wins. He's already got the strikeout record. He's already got the consecutive wins record. Franchise record there, 14 straight. Got that earlier in the year. Started the All-Star game. It's going to be one of those years when his career is over. He'll look back on and maybe point to this mm -hmm. as the highlight of his career. So yeah, I think I had it working in '96. Yeah. At the breaking ball, working right now against Lansing, the count 0 and 2. Lansing fly to left his first time up. Lansing's the first pitch fastball hitter. Likes to jump on you early in the count, and John has started him with two breaking balls, and they were good ones. Here's the 0 2 on the way. A little bit low. One ball, two strikes. Fouled away. Still one and two. As it boils down and as it narrows down, I should say, for the four playoff teams. At least one of them is really going to be a long distance affair. Whether it's the Braves and the Padres or the Expos and the Dodgers. There's that sidearm delivery we've seen Smoltz go to on occasion in the last few starts. Effective for him in his last start against Houston. Still one and two on Lansing. Just a little different look. Hitters must be thinking that's all we need. Mm hmm. Now the one two on the way and the breaking ball strikes out Lansing six strikeouts in the first three innings for John Smoltz no score as we go to the bottom half of the third. Let's check out the Axit AR scoreboard for games that are underway. Pittsburgh has scored twice in the bottom of the first they've won ten in a row and looking to extend that. 
Florida trying to put Houston out of their misery early on. No score at Philadelphia. Game one of a doubleheader. They got rained down yesterday. Cardinals have the lead in the fifth. In the American League tie game at Cleveland. Indians have already clinched and Baltimore trying to hang on as the wild card underway hosting Toronto. Mark Lemke leads off here in the bottom of the third to be followed by John Smoltz and the top of the order Marquis Grissom. Lemke 249 four homers he's driven in 36 runs. Down on the count nothing in one. Mark was a question mark again today as to whether or not he was going to be in the lineup. But taking a ding on his throwing hand last night in a bad hop in the ninth. It's even one ball one strike. You know those growth chart posters that they give away in yeah. some ballparks measure how tall you are next to a certain player that's down the third baseline fair Lemke rounding first heading for second Rodriguez over near the bullpen mound to feel this one it's a double for Mark Lemke. <laughs> I don't know that an umpire's ever had ever been more on top of a call down the line than Dana DeMuth was for this one it landed right at his feet he was trying to make sure it didn't hit him watch this right over the bag now watch Dana DeMuth look straight down yep yep back up the line Fair ball. I was just thinking about Lemke in that growth chart poster they ought to make a trainers poster for Lemke they could just have him standing there showing various injuries All the injuries you have during the course of a year that you play through mm -hmm. most Hang, of the time hang it on the wall Third hit of the game for the Braves off the Cerro, and now John Smoltz steps in. See if he's bunting or swinging here. Expos thinking he's going to be bunting. He squares and pulls back the pitch up high. Ball one. Segui right on top of him, charging in from first. Every now and then, with a runner at second base, Bobby Cox will take the butt off with some of his better hitting pitchers like Smoltz. Well if he thinks John can pull the ball at all on Facero he might as well let him swing away because Santangelo is near the bag Rizalonic is almost on the second base bag. He's going to swing and miss one ball one strike. But he was looking at David Segui he was going to take a poke at him if he was going to climb on top of him. Nobody out Lemke at second Braves trying to break through and get on the board here in the bottom of the third. Good bunt down the third base side. Santangelo fields on the first just in time there. That gets Lemke over to third. That's a perfect bunt. Yeah, it is. But a smart idea on the second pitch to swing away because it kept Sagi from climbing on him, gave him a little more room. And he almost got a base hit out of it as a result. Kills it nicely down the line. Now watch Santangelo. He almost slipped down. His right foot went out from under him a little bit but he recovered and just got him at first base. Runner at third one man out for Marquise Grissom who fly to center his first time up. Save there by Webster. One ball, no strikes. You said he needed two more hits, Pete. He said he, before the season, he wanted 200 hits, 100 for each of his children. And he's one shy for each one. Demonte and Tiana, it won't be long. The 1 0. Another good save by Webster. This one in the dirt, 2 0. And don't worry, neither one were forced out of their bedroom to make room for Jermaine Dye. Jermaine's been <laughs> staying down in the basement, the finished basement. Infield in for the Expos with Lemke at third, one out. Here's the 2 0 on the way. Grounded right to the shortstop. Grinzelanik will hold the runner and throw to first. Two down. 
So now it'll take a two out hit by 19 year old Andrew Jones who doubled his first time up. It's rare Pete that we see a 19 year old in a ball game but how about two of them in a game of this magnitude this kind of importance Jones and Vladimir Guerrero separated by only 10 months. Andrews the younger. Well, we commented early on in the series how similar this is to a situation back in the late 70s when Dale Murphy and Andre Dawson came along mm -hmm. at the same time for these two clubs. Went on to have splendid careers, both of them. Dawson retiring at the end of this season. And ceremonies for him in Florida last night. One ball, no strikes. And Dale Murphy, I'm sure, will be in town for this farewell to the ballpark tomorrow night. He certainly created a lot of the memories that oh boy. folks have here in Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. Two and oh the count on Andrew Jones. Did Eddie Matthews come with the club in yes. Milwaukee? He played here briefly. Didn't played he? here briefly. Hank Aaron, of course, looking forward. In fact, Hank's been around for a couple of days now. Some of the scouts that have been in town, including Ralph Gar, one of his former teammates, will also be in town. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. Three and one the count. Cicero's working to Chipper much or to Andrew rather much like Smoltz was working to Alou in the first inning with a runner in scoring position. He eventually struck out Moises Alou, but he was trying very hard not to make a mistake to allow the first run of the game. Here's the three-one delivery, bouncing ball towards short. It's going to be a long throw for Grizzolanic. Didn't get him. Andrew Jones beats it. Mark Lemke scores. Braves lead one nothing. There's that extra gear you were talking about, Joe. Extra gear, and it took Grizzlonic one extra reach into his glove, and that was the difference. He had a tough backhanded play, but right there, he had to get a little extra grip on the baseball, and that certainly gave Andrew enough time to beat it out. He can beat you a lot of ways. Tenth RBI of the season for Jones. One nothing Atlanta. Here's Chipper Jones who struck out in the first. Andrew on the run. Throw down by Webster. Didn't get him. Stolen base number two for Andrew Jones. Looks like he got a good jump. Lenny Webster made a good throw but. It didn't make any difference. Good crossover step. Started low by coming out of the blocks and stayed low. Now Andrew in scoring position. The 0 1. This is inside on ball on strike. Chipper struck out on a pitch away from him his last time up. His only time up today, and only two for ten against Facero, so he might be thinking about middle of the plate away this at bat. One ball, one strike to count. One nothing Atlanta. Braves with four hits now off Facero. The 1 1 on the way. In the air, deep center field. Guerrero drifting back. Got some reach in his glove, too. That's out number three, but the Braves are on the board. An infield hit by Andrew Jones scores Mark Lemke. It's 1 0 Atlanta after three.
Let's give you today's Aflac trivia question. Here it is. Who threw out the first pitch in the first regular season game at the stadium back in 1966? And we will have the answer for you in the bottom half of the inning. There are some nominees for that one. It'd be tough to come up with the exact one. I got a guess, but we'll let the fans make their guesses as well. We'll see how we do. Dave Smoltz with six strikeouts already as we go to the fourth inning, Joe. Sorry. Pete David Segui, Moises Alou, and Henry Rodriguez. Part of their order. Segui drew a walk, went to second on a balk, but Alou struck out to end the first inning. Off speed pitch gets in there for a strike. The Braves 28 and 21 in day games. Expos also have a winning record. They're 24 and 21. Busted him inside. He almost hit him his first time at bat. Firing one in there. One and one the count. Looked like Vladimir Guerrero had a little trouble on that fly ball by Chipper Jones to end the third inning. Second time he had, had to adjust a little bit on a fly ball to him. I wonder if he's having trouble picking the ball up here. Moving over to center this afternoon. That's got a chance to get out of here and way out of here and is way out of here. Tie game. David Segui, his 10th home run of the year. 55th RBI. 19th home run allowed by Smoltz and no doubt about it strong breeze blowing that way helped it but it was going out anyway and Segui has definitely had the big bat for the Expos in this series that's his fifth hit and his fifth RBI he got a fastball and got some lift on it you get some lift on it out toward right field today it's going to carry so that lead didn't last long here's a loop Fouls one back. He's two for 12 in the series. He has a home run. A two run shot off of Klontz in game one. No appeal made, but apparently the pitch and the swing, or lack of a swing, ball one. There's a strike. That's the same pitch Alou did not like when he was called out on strikes in the first inning. He is right down and actually off the knob of the bat with that bottom hand. Little finger wrapped around the knob of the bat. You watch David Segui when he's up there, Pete, and it looks like the bat is a feather in his hand. Moises looks like he's got a hold of it, like he's afraid somebody's going to take it away from him. Full count. John has six strikeouts. Did he go? Not this time. A free pass. Second one issued by John Smoltz. Bobby thought he went. That's one of those borderline check mm -hmm. swings. We've seen it called both ways. I think I'd have let him slide on that one too. Henry Rodriguez struck out his first time on an appeal play. His first start in this series was two for two as a pinch hitter. A Lou calls time after that pickoff attempt. Drive to center off the bat of Rodriguez. Marquise Grissom going back and shy of the track makes the catch. Alou went back to tag, but Marquise gets it in quickly. Not a bad throw when you're throwing off balance and just flip it in, but he holds Alou at first. One out.
Got some help there from Andrew Jones, who let him know that Alou had gone back to tag up. And Vladimir Guerrero, the hitter. Three for 14 in the series, three for 14 in his big league career. Roll one to third, his first time up. Fouls it back just above us. I'm going to make a prediction on Vladimir Guerrero's career. I bet he never leads the league in walks. <laughs> <laughs> He's a free swinger, isn't he? Hacking away. Listed at 6'2, 195. He has actually already turned 20. Andrew Jones won't turn 20 until November. A lot of dignitaries from Curacao here to watch Andrew Jones play this weekend. Off the end of the bat, Lemke's got it, but no play at first as Alou hustles back. Two out. Well, again, you get an idea as to just why Vladimir Guerrero is going to be such a tough hitter. He's got such tremendous reach. Here you see Alou scampering back to first after the catch was made by Lemke. Well, that pitch wasn't a strike. He not, you've heard of good plate coverage. He's good, got good batter's box coverage. But you, you get up against a guy like that, and you get ahead of him in the count, you try to just to waste one and show him something else, so you're not necessarily yeah. going to waste it. He might reach out and get a base hit off you on that pitch. F.P. Santangelo singled his first time up. Takes a ball, 1-0. and Threat to run, but doesn't go, and the pitch fouled back. Alou, nine out of 12 and stolen bases on the air. Two out, a tie game. The home run by David Segui, leading off the inning, is tied it at one. And Smoltz tries to hold him close. I didn't see on the sheet today, Pete, about the pitching matchups out in uh, San Diego this afternoon. Do we know who's going in that Padres Dodgers game today? Yes, we do. It's a Dale Nomo against Andy Ashby. And Nomo's first start after the no hitter at Coors Field. Santangelo stays alive with a little slap shot foul. Dodgers yesterday afternoon stung San Diego with a big inning in the middle of the game. It was a six run inning, put the game away. Now, time called by Alou again. Although I'm not sure why. He didn't even walk off the bag or dust himself off. One and two the count. Chased a breaking ball down in the dirt. John Smoltz has his seventh strikeout. Leaves a runner at first, but a home run by David Sagi leading off the fourth inning. As the Expos and the Braves tied at one. Let's give you the answer now to today's Aflac trivia question, which is who threw out the first pitch in the first regular season game at the stadium back in 1966. The man that uh, got this place built, Mayor Ivan Allen, recognized for his efforts throwing out the first pitch on opening day here. And it was a real field of dreams. They're calling tomorrow Field of Dreams Day, but it was almost a if you build it, they will come sort of situation. The stadium was built before there was ever a major league team promised for Atlanta. And once the stadium was built, Indeed, the Milwaukee Braves did come here. Fred McGriff will lead off the inning, followed by Lopez and Die. Isn't it true that they thought 
that if they that they had to hurry to get the stadium built though for one year and then they had to wait a year actually for the Braves to come down. Is that yeah, right? there, were, there were some court actions taken in 1965 that kept the Braves in Milwaukee for a lame duck season. They thought they were going to get them in 65 had to wait till 66 till all the courts got through with it. The Atlanta Crackers in fact minor league team played in the stadium in 65. Yeah. I didn't know that. Griff grounded out his first time up. Takes low. Two and one. Pretty good yard for a triple A club to play at. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. Two one pitch. Foul. And this park was more or less the uh, the first of the multi-purpose stadiums, was it not? Wasn't it after this stadium that Riverfront, Three River Stadium, some of those stadiums were yeah, designed Cincinnati, after? Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, St. Louis, Philadelphia. All out of the basic same design, which has now become archaic. Yeah. Two and two, the See, count. It's the one argument I have against, uh, and I understand certainly what the, the individuals that are the nostalgia buffs saying the ballpark should be saved. It, it's, it's time to move on. It's, it's, it's if, if you really believe in nostalgia that deeply, you would never sell your first house. True. You, you would stay there forever. It's time to move to something bigger and better. And there are going to be so many improvements in the new place that they're, they're too long to list. Facero fans McGriff, his third strike out of the afternoon. And speaking of a new place, they continue to work away at what was Centennial Olympic Stadium, will be renamed. We don't know what yet. That will be the Braves' new home next year. Yeah, and Ivan Allen's name has certainly gained a lot of support for the naming of the stadium. Javi Lopez rifled a single to center his first time up. It was erased on a double play, hit into by Jermaine Dye. Takes ball one. I was talking to Bill Acre before the game, Pete, about this ballpark. I mean, he basically grew up here. Yeah. Literally working himself up from the ground level. Base hit again by Lopez into center. That's similar to his game winning hit a couple of nights ago. He's two for two. But Bill Acre started here working on the ground crew, doing other things at this ballpark. I said, Are you have a lot of sentimental attachment here? Are you going to be saddened by the by leaving? He said, Not a bit. No, it, it, let's let's go. Let's yeah, move it's, onward it's, and upward. It's back to what I was saying. There, there are certainly some very, very nice things about this ballpark, but there are some other things about the ballpark. Uh, some of the areas underneath the ballpark that are, mm -hmm. are are difficult to navigate in. That will not be the case in the new ballpark. The seating arrangements will be much better, more fan friendly. Fans will be closer to the field. Concessions will be better. Luxury boxes will be better. Clubhouses will be better. He made a good point about the concourses and the concession stands. Jermaine Dye up there, 0 and 1. More into office space play. for everybody. That's low, 1 and 1. Even and the members of the media that complain about losing the nostalgic Atlanta Fulton County Stadium will have much plusher accommodations in the new press box. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. But you can actually go to the concession stand and get something to eat and still watch the still game. Still watch the game. See the field from the concourses. And if you have a front row box seat and it begins to rain, you won't have to climb 115 rows to <laughs> get the shelter. <laughs> yeah, there will be some ramps and some exits a little bit lower in that lower section. A 1 1 tie. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Breaking ball off the end of the bat. Facero will only have one play, and that's the first. Two down. Jermaine Dye retired for the second time, and now Jeff Blouser with a chance to pick up an RBI. His first at bat since coming back off the DL. Took a call third strike. He said, you know, I got some hits down there in the instructional league. He said, but it was not Major League Pitching. He said it'll be a big difference adjusting to that today. 
And he, he made no, another interesting comment. And he related it to the umpires. First the pitch. In the air foul and twisting into the seats. Because he was allowed to hit every inning. Mm -hmm. He said there were times where he said, I didn't even have time to get a drink. I was on the field playing shortstop. I'd come in and hit every inning. He said I had a better appreciation for the umpires who were out there for nine innings <laughs> without a break. Yeah, the instructional league is exactly that an instructional league. The rules are bent to accommodate whatever they are trying to accomplish with each individual player. And each game starts every day starts at 1230. Have some work before that. But it's a very good atmosphere. And he said the guys down there were having a lot of fun and he said it was. A, a very good trip for him as I mentioned earlier. Right back toward us Phil get ready. No. Just missed. And so did he. Yep. Heartbreak Hotel. I'm sure. Elvis, who's here today, would have had that one. Yeah, maybe out of car. Might have been Heartbreak Hotel too. He might have missed it. Oh, and two to Blouser. Hi, one and two. Jeff's average was a little under 250 when he got hurt. But as was pointed out a few days ago in a radio interview by Chipper Jones, he was on a pace to hit 25 home runs. Yes, he was. Got him looking. Good breaking ball by Facero. Guarantee you, Jeff didn't see a pitch like that down in Florida. Four strikeouts for Facero. We played four innings. We're still tied at one. Another good ball game here in Atlanta. We go to the top of the fifth inning. We're tied at one. Bottom part of the order for the Expos. Lenny Webster, then the pitcher Jeff Facero, and then back to the top of the order. Lenny Webster's first time up struck out to end the second inning. Smoltz has fanned seven already through four innings. The only damage, a home run by David Segui leading off the fourth. He's allowed only two hits. One on one the count. Get hard up the middle, and Lee Webster leads off the inning with a base hit. Gives Sarah a chance to bunt, perhaps, and help himself out. These two teams very, very similar since the break, Pete. Very similar. All the numbers very close. The one-loss record, batting average only six points or apart. Runs per game about the same. ERA about the same. Big difference in payroll. Huge difference in payroll. <laughs> Cicero is bunting and drops it down. Smoltz will go to first base. His only play. Good bunt by Facero. He helps himself out. John Smoltz bunt in this third inning. Help get a guy in scoring position. Got Lemke into scoring position. He scored on an infield hit later on by Andrew Jones. Let's put it this way. The Braves starting four make more than the entire Montreal Expos team. No kidding. Speaking of payrolls, Pittsburgh going after win number 11 in a row. Houston's picked a bad time to go in the tank. They've lost seven in a row, maybe eight in a row today, and St. Louis playing a doubleheader at Cincinnati. Baltimore needs a win. 
Mark Grizzolanik sends a drive into center, and Grissom was playing shallow. That's over his head, and it bounces out of the ballpark. It'll be a ground rule double. Lenny Webster scores, and the Expos have a two to one lead on Grizzolanik's 47th RBI of the year. Balls are really jumping out to center field. 33rd double of the year for Grizzolanik. Right over the heart of the plate about belt high. About you could see how shallow Grissom was playing. He was just hoping to play the carom, but it carom right out of here. That pitch similar to the one he threw to Segui that cost him a run. And now Lansing with a chance for an RBI. He is lined out and struck out. Two for 15 in the series. Good fastball strike. You were talking earlier, Pete, about the motivation for the Expos and the attitude about how they were feeling coming into this series. You cut the lead down to four with a bunch of games to play with a leader. You got a chance. Double play. Yeah. Just got him. Nice play by Blauser. Good heads up play by Lemke to be at the bag. Grizzolina couldn't stop and get back, and it'll be a line drive double play. Smoltz is out of the inning, but not before the Expos take the lead. We go to the bottom of the fifth, skip and down, hit it over here. It's two to one, Montreal. Expos have just taken a two to one lead. Skip Gary, Don Sutton with you the rest of the way. And Skip, I don't know that if it's who's on top that may be the most important thing right now. This is a pitching matchup that you look forward to, and it's going about the way you would have thought. Unfortunately though it's beginning to head a little more Montreal's way than it was earlier in the game. Mark Lemke who has scored the only run of the day for the Braves double leading off the third Andrew Jones drove him home with a single. And Lemke will lead it off here in the fifth inning a run on five hits for the Braves they have out it the Expos but the Expos in the column that counts lead it two to one. Beautiful day here in Atlanta. Cicero starts him with the strike at the knees 0 and 1. Ball one misses outside. Lemke had a hit in four trips last night. His double here in today's ball game has pushed his average back up over the 250 mark. This year's over. Somebody ought to give Mark Lemke a purple heart. Because he has played, I doubt if he has had a week this year when he hasn't played with some little nagging injury. And some more than just little nagging injuries. Back our way, and it's two and two. Well, he's single. He has the nagging injuries, but he doesn't have the <laughs> nagging that so many of the rest of us have. Speak for yourself. You'll be in trouble when you get home, too. No, she's here. Oh. You pick <laughs> so she didn't hear it? you got to pick your spot. <laughs> Lemke high and deep to left field. They're not going to get it. It's gone. We're tied. For Lemke, home run number five this year, but that's the second in his career off Jeff Facero. It has been a long dry spell for Mark Lemke. Fastball up. He didn't get it up far enough. Just under the letters, and Mark ripped it. Might surprise you if you run through this batting order today as John Smoltz bats. Fouls it back into the crowd 0 and 1. If you run through the batting order of the Braves today, it might surprise you that Mark Lemke is the only man in the lineup who has a home run off Jeff Facero and he has a pair. Outside one and one. Sixth hit of the day for the Braves. Sproltz again fouls it away and it's one and two.
By the way, that home run for Mark Lemke, a milestone. He's now a member of the 5 5 club. Five homers and five stolen bases. It's a line that our partner Pete Van Weeren dropped on Lemke the other day when he stole his fifth base. He said, Yeah, he is really hustling to join the 5 and 5 club. Smoltz is gone. Strikeout number four for Facero. We'll head to the top of the batting order and Marquise Grissom. Grissom hitless in two trips. Fly to center, grounder to short. The grounder to short came back in the third inning when the Expos brought the infield in after Lemke had double and Smoltz had sacrificed in the third, but Andrew Jones picked him up, drove home to run with two outs. Can't hold up on the high heater, and it's 0 and 1. That strikeout of Smoltz, the fifth for Fracero. Smoltz himself on the ground and through a base hit for Lemke. Second hit in the inning. Smoltz has struck out seven. When you have two of the best in the league at strikeouts, you can expect a few U turns at home plate. It's 199 for Grissom, one away from his stated goal of 200 hits. If the Braves could clinch today, there could be a lot of good things happen on the same day. John Smoltz has set the modern day franchise record for strikeouts. He could very easily get his 23rd win. Grissom could get his 200th hit. So Braves and Braves fans looking for a lot of exciting stuff. To third, knocked down by third baseman Andrews or Santangelo. He'll not be able to make a play. We'll see how they score it. Probably an error. He's had a tough time of it down there today. It's not his natural position. He got a bad jump. And then the ball came out of his hands. He tried to salvage the situation, was just late. And give Grissom a little credit for hustle. He didn't ease up at all on that play. So the Braves have runners at first and second, still only one out, and Chipper Jones, the hitter. A strikeout and a fly to center. What Chipper Jones has to show for two at bats. And Facero in a jam. Sends the first one for a strike and it's 0 and 1. Can you imagine what it's like in the Meadowlands today? They're halfway through the third quarter. The Giants and Jets, neither with a win, and the score is Giants 7, Jets 3. Can you imagine what that crowd is like? Good. Outside, one ball, one strike. They're still booing, but it's now 7 <laughs> 6. Expos bunch the infield against Chipper Jones, both Grizzlanic and Lansing, a good three or four steps closer to the bag than normal. Room in both the holes in the third and the first base side. Fouled away, one and two. streak for Chipper Jones against the Expos. Five game series. This is game number four. You don't see that very often. The Olympic Games caused this quirk in the schedule. Out of play. Still one and two. You think it's quirky this year. Wait till next year if they go to interleague play. I got a little peek at the tentative schedule this morning at breakfast. There could be six days in New York in a 10 game stretch separated by four against the Pirates here at home. Think about that. But the one thing the schedule makers did do is put Colorado and San Francisco back to back. 
tentative schedule. Inside, that'll even it at two balls and two strikes. I'm looking forward to the Montreal, to San Francisco, to Colorado, to Atlanta. Virtue. We may have to pack a trunk. Take some sweaters with our Mark Thomas shirts, huh? Michael Mark. Thomas. Or Sorry, Michael. Michael Thomas vests. Some big victim. Inside, full count. Do you start him? You have speed both at second and at first. I bet he does. Bobby Cox is a gambling manager. We will soon find out a payoff pitch due to Chipper Jones. They're not going. Chop foul, no play. We'll reload and try it again. Still three and two. That really surprised me that they weren't running. Chipper Jones. He struck out once in this game. That's probably what they're thinking about. Well, more often than not, he puts the ball in play. Chipper Jones with 84 strikeouts, but he's drawn 85 walks. Eighty five walks tops on the ball club by a pretty wide margin. So another three two pitch on the way. This time they're going slow roller out in front of the plate. Got him at first. So going or not that's probably the only play that could have been made and a good play by Webster making sure that Marquise Grissom didn't come too far around the bag at third. Here's another look. Yeah, this is a tough play for Webster, too. If he gets that ball a little, hits it just a little harder, he's got a hit. Webster took one look at third, and that almost cost him on the play. Got him by a half step. What we weren't able to show you in that replay there was if on the, he almost threw that ball on the run to first because he was hustling back to home plate to make sure there was somebody there. So if the Braves are going to pick up another one, they're going to have to do it with two gone. It's up to Fred McGriff. That's why he was looking at third to see if Marquise slowed down or kept on a coming. Cicero from the stretch. Little looper, but San Angelo has it. The Braves do pick up one. Mark Lemke, who has scored both the runs, picks up home run number five. We have completed five. It's a 2 2 ball game. Before we go to the sixth, it's time for the Budweiser game summary. There it is, two good pitchers pitching well. A couple of solo home runs in the game. Braves have left five, and the Expos have left three, and there's your Budweiser game summary. To the sixth we go. For the Expos, David Segui, who has a home run and a walk, will lead it off. A Lou and Rodriguez to follow. Calendar says summer is over, but you wouldn't know it by the weather we're enjoying here and attire of some of the Braves fans. It's a great time of the year down here, isn't it? What, what about the attires of the Braves fans? What's that got to do? Uh, check that out. Boy, she's really going good, isn't she? <laughs> That's the really not wanting to be seen in public with somebody, isn't it? Strike one to Siggy. <laughs> Boy, I've got such a great line, but you do. I love working here, so you're on your own. <laughs> one and one. Sort of looked like Mr. Metz, brother. The opinions stated by the man to my left are strictly his. <laughs> What's wrong with saying he looked like Mr. Metz? Brother? Nothing. With that part of it. Oh, I, that's all I was going to say, except for one ball, one strike. Tap foul. One and two. It's okay. killing you, isn't it? Yeah, but I've gotten control of it. We're okay. <laughs> Off 
speed. And ball two. Two balls and two strikes. I would guess that David Segui will not see another inner half fastball. He has made his hits count in this weekend series against the Braves. If he gets a fastball, it's going to be more than just the inner half. It's going to be right on his fist. But Smoltz has made some good pitches with his forkball. Looks like he's going to see another one. He does. And it's foul. Nice play, Louis Pujols. Still two and two. Both our coaches have been in fielding slumps lately, haven't they? Yes, they have. Yep. They've been spending so much time with the extra players here working on extra batting practice and stuff. They haven't had time to polish their own skills. Here comes the fastball. Flick down the left field line, and it's two and two. Every coaching staff that I've ever been around is a hard working one. But I don't know that I've seen one that logs as many hours actively involved with hitting and fielding, things like that, as this staff does. Got him with the fork ball. Smoltz has strikeout number eight, a swinging strikeout. Another look. There's the target. See, that ball's in the dirt, but you can't lay off because it looks like a strike before it explodes. There's out number one, and here's Moises Alou, a strikeout and a walk. He has been to bat 27 times against John Smoltz. 13 times he hasn't made contact. Six walks and seven strikeouts, and he falls behind on the first one here. Out of play right side. No balls, two strikes. Hammered to right center field. Grissom on the run and glides under it. He gets such a good jump that he makes the difficult ones look easy. The jump is what does it. Alou thinks he might be in business here, but he's seen Griss Grissom play enough to know it's tough to get one away from him. Though Grizzolanic hit one over his head early. Boy, there was a great shot there from our low home camera. As Rodriguez comes to bat, he's 0 for 2, a strikeout and a fly to center. Doesn't get the first one, 0 and 1. If you watch this shot, watch the first step by Alou is also the first step by Grissom. So Alou wasn't out of the batter's box before Grissom was on the move. Those are that great instincts in the outfield. 0 and 2. And also, as the year progresses, we're finding out more and more about. Marquise Grissom great article I believe it was this morning's paper about Marquise and about his work ethics his work habits the environment that he grew up in he said I don't want to be spectacular I just want to do what I'm supposed to do over and over and over and over one two three goes sit down goes Rodriguez so one two three inning thanks to a nice running catch by Grissom got to be a freebie one two three bottom of the six two two. I can't believe I'm losing my hair back here. Like father, like son. Yeah, right. Look, if you want to regrow some hair, check this out. It's a 2-2 ball game under perfectly blue autumn skies here in Atlanta as the Braves come to bat in the bottom of the sixth inning. One of the heroes of the day, a perfect two for two, is Javi Lopez. He'll get it started against Jeff Facero, Jermaine Dye, and Jeff Blauser to follow. Mark Lemke has scored both the runs, doubled, was driven home by Andrew Jones in the third and a leadoff homer in the fifth inning. Lopez with his pair of singles is now up to 280 for the year. Low 1-0. That 
that's foul and it's one and one. He's now four out of eight in the series and hitting over 300 for the last 10 days. center field that's going to be an easy one for Vladimir Guerrero the youngster tracks it down there's out number one in the sixth inning and Jermaine Dye will bat Dye uh, hit the ball sharply his first time up but it was converted into a second to short to first double play erasing the leadoff single of Javi Lopez that coming in the second inning and then he hit one back to the mound his second time up Still at 288. Double figures in homers. He has 11. Down low, 1 0. We were talking a little bit earlier about uh, Marquise Grissom and his work ethics and the kind of person that he is. Jermaine Dye is one player who has really benefited from the generosity and the unselfishness and the expertise of Marquise Grissom. On the ground, another chance for Santangelo, and this time he gets the out. That's four in a row set down by Fracero since the air by San Angelo back in the fifth inning. Jermaine died when he came here. Kind of hard to find a place to live. So Marquise Grissom said, I have a big house. Why don't you come down and stay with us? And two have spent a lot together, and he has actually become Jermaine Dye's mentor on outfield play and on the big league life. And I don't think he could have picked a better tutor to turn a young outfielder over to. Blouser doesn't get the first one. It's 0-1. When Jermaine goes back to California, when the season and the playoffs and hopefully the World Series are over, I think Paul and Josh now just move, move in, in out there too. <laughs> I guess I had to talk to Marquise about it first. Ball one outside to Blouser. Stairs and it's two and one. A little bit low, three balls and one strike. Frustrating day to this point for Jeff Blauser. He was taking some good hacks down in instructional league. But he's 0 for 2 against Facero. Two strikeouts, once swinging, once looking. He might get himself a pitch to hit here. He does, lines it in the center. So Blauser with his first base hit in about nine weeks will stand at first with two gone for Mark Lemke, who has already had himself a day, a double, a homer, and two runs scored. Blauser's hit number eight for the Braves. Twice as many as the Expos, but in the all important column. Tied at 2 2. And the left field line security guards beat the right field line security guards to the field as Joe Kerrigan came out to talk with his pitcher. It's not that Listerine is not the order of the day in their dugout. This is one thing you see more and more as coaches and catchers and infielders talk to their pitchers. Covering their mouth, so I guess they give somebody a lot better credit for being able to lip read than they probably do. Either that or they cover their mouth so that the pitcher can't understand them, but I don't know. <laughs> then why go out and well, visit? I told you to send them inside. It's like those airport announcements. Have you heard those? Hey, you, Mr. Sam, <laughs> your car is on fire. Or a uh, fast food drive through. Yeah. You're on hot? Here's Lemke. There's ball one outside. Oh, yes, just hit another home run. We'll have the lead. Lemke, one of the hitters in the league that has not been buffaloed by Facero. Blauser has five steals. And probably draws more throws to first than any guy who doesn't steal 30 in the league. 
One ball, no strikes. Outside, 2-0. and oh. was surprised to see Limke hitting so well from the right side. He it took two hits today to get him up over 200. He's hitting about 270 as a left-hander. The ball three outside. But he's drawn 52 base on balls. 20 of them have come from the right-handed batter's box, and about a third as many at bats. He's still one of the top ten in the league, toughest to strike out. There's a strike. Three balls, one strike. Lumpy, who spent most of the year up in the 270s and 280s. Activity in the Expos bullpen. He's now got the average climbing again. Ball four. We'll draw the walk. Dave Veer is up in the bullpen now. That is the first issued by Facero today. He has a good strikeout to walk ratio. So the Braves have him at first and second. Blouser down at second. Lemke at first. Joe Kerrigan yelling to Lenny Webster, don't take him lightly. You actually can't take any of these brave starting pitchers lightly as a hitter. Curveball high, 1-0. and oh. It's one of those spots physician heal thyself. John has a chance to really help his cause here. Smoltz, Avery, Glavin, Maddox, not automatic outs with the bats. In the air to right field, fairly deep. Back goes, it's gone! A three-run homer for John Smoltz, his first of the year, and the Braves lead it five to two. Physician, thyself is healed. A complete makeover. Boy, is he excited about that. That's three home runs we've seen in this series get out in right field that looked like they had no chance. He got it a little bit more over the middle of the plate than he wanted. Alou thought he was going to catch the ball. Marquise Grissom trying to bat. Amid all the hubbub, a three-run homer for John Smoltz, number four in his career. Braves lead it five to two. It's one and zero oh to Grissom. He doesn't get it, and it's one and one. Now that pizza commercial, are going to have to do another one where he's stealing dirt out of the batter's box, huh? <laughs> that could have been one of those good news, bad news home runs if today is getaway day. If it was getaway day and we had to get on the charter, that's all you would hear from front to back of the airplane, at least 24 hours for it to soak in a little. I would fly commercial. That's gone too. Back to back. And way out of here. What a way to get his 200th hit, huh? Hit number 200 for Marquis Grissom. Standing, a standing ovation for a great addition to this Braves ball club. Six to two, the score. Here's another look, and he cranks this baby. Breaking ball down, and he really crushed it. That's about as far as I think he's hit one. Facero is out. Dave Veers is in. And we'll be back right after this.
One of the heroes of the day, Marquise Grissom, in spring training, said, I would like to get 200 hits. I would like to get 100 for each of my children. Not too many athletes in this era will pin goals like that, especially lofty goals, out on their sleeves, but he's done it. He has accomplished it. What a great day, and the Braves lead it 6 to 2. Six times this year, the Braves have gone back to back in the home run category. And if you're looking, if you're a Braves fan, you're looking for one other note to be positive about. They're 16 and 0 when they hit three homers in a ball game. New pitcher out of the bullpen. There's a look at right hander Dave Veers. Also, his numbers. He is a strikeout pitcher. Fusero, five and two thirds innings, 10 hits, six runs, a walk, five strikeouts, three homers. 97 pitches, 61 strikes, 36 balls. And he came into this ball game with only 16 home runs allowed in about 225 innings. Andrew Jones will greet Dave Ears, takes ball one outside. Jones has been on base three times. He doubled in the first, he singled in the third, got on an error in the fifth. Has an RBI. Off speed, one and one. A four run sixth inning for the Braves. The big blow. Fourth career home run for John Smoke. On the ground. Great play, San Angelo. Can he throw him out? Safe. Good play on both ends, but credit that young man with some hustle. Andrew Jones is going to leg out an infield single. And that's what they score. It's San Angelo's had some trouble down there, but he made a great play here. His throw is one of those in between hoppers, and they rule that Sagi came off the bag. I don't know that he did looking at it again. They have been a break for the Braves and for Andrew Jones. All this with two out, nobody on, and the and as you said, a guy who hadn't played in nine weeks coming to the plate. A 250 hitter and a pitcher to follow. Like it, LaHay. A remi like your reminder, what did Joaquin Andujar say? You can sum it up in one word. You never know. Here's Chipper Jones. He'd like to get joined the hit parade. He is hitless in three trips. By the way, down the United States rolled past Europe on the final day of competition. Won its second consecutive Solheim Cup in Chepstow, Wales. That on the LPGA Tour in a tremendous event. That's a balk. So it is coming unravel for the Expos. They won the first one in these series, but the last two have not been a lot of fun. And the Braves trying to clinch it here. No idea what he could have called the balk for. But apparently Beers knew it because there was no argument. So with another base runner in scoring position, here's the first pitch to Chipper Jones. It's down low and it's 1-0. and By the way, Florida is now number one in the USA Today CNN college football poll. And Nebraska losing to Arizona State falls all the way down to seventh. Who's number two? Florida State? Well, they're number uh, Yeah, Florida State second. 2 0 to Chipper Jones. Penn State, Ohio State are next. Two balls, no strikes. Chipper Jones, the eighth man to bat in the inning. Lopez and Dye went very quietly to start it. Then it all came unravel for Jeff Facero. On the corner, 2 and 1. Two balls and two strikes. That's right under Mike 
Dyer warming up in the Expos bullpen. This game was moving along quite briskly to this inning, but the pace has slowed considerably here in the bottom of the sixth. Four hits in the inning for the Braves, including a pair of homers. That's outside. That'll run it full to Chipper Jones, three and two. By the way, I think we neglected to tell you that home run by Marquise Grissom, his 23rd. And he also has 72 RBIs out of the leadoff slot. And he's been leadoff all year long. Ball four. No advance by Andrew Jones. So Beers walks Chipper Jones. Completing one turn through the batting order. Ninth man in the inning is Fred McGriff. McGriff is hitless in three trips. Double trouble for the Expos to worry about. Not only do they see the Eastern Division slipping away over into the Braves' dugout, but that wild card spot is something they have to start thinking about, too. McGriff 0 for 3 in his career against Veers fouls the first one away. It's 0 and 1. Here's what the wild card race looks like now. San Diego and L.A. will tee it up a little bit later on. But right now, two games in the win column separates San Diego and Montreal. You can pretty much say it's over for Colorado and Houston. Won't make any friends if you say it, but you could say it. In the dirt, good stop by Webster. One good thing about the length of this inning is to give John a chance to calm down a little bit. You know, he was really pumped after the three run home. And if you know John Smoltz at all, he is one who gets emotionally involved in good events. So, have a calm look now. Swing and a miss by McGriff, and it's one and two. Just watching Lenny Webster back there, Skip. I know he's on the short end of the score now, but he's one of those guys that seems like the older he gets, the more he improves as a catcher. He's done a great job behind the plate this series, and he has shown himself as good as anybody in the league at blocking balls in the dirt. Got another chance there, and it's two and two. Beers doesn't like the first sign. Jones at second, Jones at first. Up and in, three and two. Beers one pitch away from loading him up and giving Javi Lopez his second at bat in the inning. And lousing up at least two score sheets. <laughs> but it's worth the trouble. Home runs are flying out of here today. Look for McGriff to unload if there's anything in the strike zone. That's out of play. That was up and away. May have been ball four. Still three and two. <laughs> Messrs. Jones and Jones on the move with the three two pitch. Too much time. A little conversation out front. You probably did not get to see it. As a matter of fact, I know we plan our programming so you don't get caught up in the national anthem. But if you folks in the Atlanta area are anywhere near the Atlanta Young Singers of Colin Wall, do yourself a favor. They are outstanding. They are a tremendous group of youngsters and did a great job on the Canadian national anthem. 
Rachel McMullen, one of the singers in the group, did a great job on our national anthem. 3 2 pitch, ball four, bases loaded. It may be a short outing for Dave Veers. He faces three, all three get on. A single, a walk, a walk. And that's going to be it. Mike Dyer will come into the ball game, and we're going to break away. First part of this bottom of the sixth inning, you wouldn't believe it. Lopez fly to center. Dye grounded to third. And Jeff Blazer, who hadn't played in nine weeks, 0 for 2 today, single. Lemke followed with a walk. John Smoltz hit one over the right field fence for a three run homer. Marquise Grissom followed that with a solo shot. Andrew Jones. Philippe Lou made a pitching change, brought in Dave Veers. Andrew Jones singled, then Veers walked Jones and McGriff, and all of a sudden here we have the third pitcher in the inning, and you're looking at it. Not much of a strikeout pitcher. Dyer, the league hitting 284 against him. In 77 innings, he's allowed seven homers. And this crowd looking for something to celebrate. Braves possibly clinching if they can just get nine more outs without giving up five runs. If they do, it could be Eddie Giovanola at shortstop tomorrow, Tony Graffanina at second, Wright Smith in right field, Andrew Jones in center, Mike Mordecai at third, Luis Polonia in right. Fusco might be in there at first, and Joe A. Walt might catch. <laughs> could very well do. And Greg Maddox will think that he is pitching a B game at Vero Beach March the 19th. Well, he'll know that he's better have a good one go. Dyer is all set up for his second at bat already having himself a good day. Here's Javi Lopez. Maybe he ought to lead off more innings with a fly to center. He got singles leading off the second. He got a single with one out in the fourth. Nothing happened. Base is loaded. Two outs. Doesn't get the breaking ball and it's 0 and 1. Lopez is average back up to 280. Outside, another block by Webster and it's 1 and 1. And so there's one lucky fan really sweating it out here. This is that uh, home run jackpot inning, 10 grand if Javi connects it. Mm. And of course, that's Joe Simpson As usual. getting to do it. Yeah. Well, he needs something to feel good about. Today. Yes, he does. <laughs> Inside, two and one. He was really excited when I began singing the theme from Oklahoma. San Diego State 51, Joe Sooners 31. <laughs> Ten grand would give him an insurmountable lead in our home run jackpot over there on radio. Fouled away. He may have had one to go downtown with and just missed it. It's two and two. This has not been his finest hour batting with the bases loaded. Braves needed an offensive outburst like this. It's the first time since August the 10th they have batted around in an inning. They did it against the Rockies and they scored six runs. So once every six weeks. They pushed across four here in this inning. On the ground to short could be the end of the inning. And $10,000 will stay in the home run jackpot kitty, but the Braves have themselves a good one. Thanks in a great part to one swing of his bat and one swing of John Smoltz's bat. A four run inning and through six. Braves six, Expos two. On a day reminiscent of many that I got to witness close up, two home runs in the bottom of the sixth giving the Braves the lead I turn it over to you Mr. Carey for the save on what could be the clinching day Vladimir Guerrero will lead it off Guerrero San Angelo and Webster are due here Smoltz seeks victory number twenty three.
good start. Fastball split the heart. 0 and 1. Nobody on, nobody out. Seventh inning. One, two. If the Braves hang on to this lead, Don and Joe will be, I think, will be in the clubhouse to talk to some of the troops and get wet. Hope not. Because this is only the first step. I think before when you won your league and it was automatically to the World Series, I think there was a little more excitement and I think that this ball club now a little bit more mature and having experienced it it's fun but it's only step one. The 0 2 pitch here it is. Chase the high fastball out of the zone one out. Ten strikeouts for Smoltz. Well knowing you you will either get wine poured on the outside or pour it on the inside. As long as it doesn't have a lot of bubbles in it. San Angelo the banner he is one for two a single and a strikeout. 6 11 and 0 for the Braves, 2 4 and 1 for Montreal. Pitching the clinching game and hitting a three run homer for Smoltz delivers. If he can get this done, I think John Smoltz would absolutely salt away the Cy Young Award. I don't vote. Well, it's going to be awfully hard to ignore him. He'll get another start, too, but what a perfect capper it would be to a dreamlike season for him. All he's done is throw strikes in the seventh inning 0 and 2. And that's the big change this year for John Smoltz. He's thrown a lot of strikes to start with. He has pitched ahead in the count. He has turned a baseball game into a business like process rather than a video game. And it's made the world of difference in his success. The 0 2 delivery here it is. He just did stay alive snapped it foul into the seats. Fan from Wilburn Georgia made that play. 0 oh and 2 the count. Foul tipped and stayed alive. Still nothing in two. I think one of the big differences too in his pitching is that pitch right there, a split finger fastball. Remember he used to tinker back and forth between a circle change and a split finger. Neither one was consistent. Now he has two fork balls that he can throw one that he throws hard for a strikeout pitch one that he takes a little off and it's become a heck of a change up for him. Javi took a little punishment blocking that one one and two the count. The Dodgers and Padres play later the Dodgers lead by a game and a half now. The Padres and Expos. At the moment, are the teams battling for the wild card berth? Two and two, the count. San Diego is 87 and 69. Montreal would be 85 and 70. Fred has it. Pitch recovers. Two out. You mentioned before that was John's 10th strikeout when he got Guerrero. That's the 12th time this year that he's done double digits. That puts you in some pretty select company. That's like Roger Clements. It's like Nolan Ryan. That's like Sandy Koufax, Bob Gibson. A number of those names that can strike out double figures 10 or more times in a season. Lenny Webster is one for two, singled and scored in the fifth. Two out here in the seventh. One and oh the count. Following tomorrow night's game here. The Expos go to Philadelphia. Home run cut but it came up empty. And then the Braves of course conclude the. Season in Montreal. So we still have a lot to say about whether or not Montreal. Is the wild card team. Past the mound. Blouser has it. And throws him out. The inning is over. One, two, three, nothing to it. We go to the bottom half of the seventh inning. Braves on top. 
six to two. O'clock tonight. We're getting programming at seven on TNT. Mike Dyer completes his warm up tosses. We're about to go to the bottom half of the seventh inning. Die, Blouser, and Lemke will be the first three for Atlanta. The way Smoltz is pitching, part of you just hopes everybody makes an out so we get this over with. But you can never have too many runs. They want to look at the baseball. Gary Darling checks it out, says it's okay, and flips it back to Dyer. While we have a moment here, a reminder that every month Chop Talk brings you features about the Braves' past, present, and future, as well as columns by John Sherholz, Bobby Cox, Braves players, and others. For all this and much more, call 1 800 700 CHOP. Subscribe to the official monthly magazine of the world champion Braves. First pitch outside, one ball, no strikes. Deals again. High drive into left center field, but playable. Guerrero is there and puts it away. One down. So there's the first one in the seventh. Here's Jeff Blauser, who with two out, nobody on, an inning ago on a 3 1 pitch single to center. And that keyed the four run explosion that has the Braves on top six to two. The big blows a three run homer by John Smoltz and a solo homer by Marquise Grissom. Outside, one ball, no strikes. Blauser has struck out twice and hit that solid single. I'm surprised he's not using a some sort of protector uh, like Jeff Bagwell yeah, uses yeah. on his hand. He's got a little thing there. Right in the back of his hand. Sagi should handle this. Battles the sun, makes the catch. It's not as big as Bagwell's, but I guess it gets the job done. Skip, it's a special day over here with all that's going on, and the Braves uh, possibly clenching it, but it's also a big day over in Dadeville, Alabama. Big Braves fan Mary Fralish is celebrating birthday 100. So we want to wish her a very happy birthday. Mark Lemke has doubled and scored, homered and scored, walked and scored. So he's had a pretty productive day. Inside, one ball, no strikes. Six two Atlanta, bottom of the seventh. We wish we could do a better job of updating you on the other scores. The tickers here took a uh, lightning hit last night. The antenna, and they thought they had it straightened out today. It's partially repaired, but it's not 100% healthy. But we'll get you the Delta scoreboard here in a little bit. Boy, a dyer. Let's just. I don't think he could play for Marge Shant. Look at that haircut. <laughs> and some facial hair there. That is the big. There's always a fad in baseball for a while. It was sideburns and then the handlebar mustaches, a la Ronnie Fingers. Now it's the whatever they call that. What is that? Van Dyke. Van. A little tapper down the first base line. He gets another good jump, tags the runner going by. And a very easy inning. A one unassisted. You don't see that every day. A double, a homer, a walk, and a one unassisted for Lemke. We go to the eighth inning with your score. 6 2 Atlanta. Let's catch you up on our Delta scoreboard. The Pirates couldn't make it 11 in a row if they could hang on to that lead. Elsewhere around the National League, Florida is shutting out Houston. Philadelphia and New York got themselves a pitching duel. The Cardinals lose to Cincinnati. Kansas City now up on Cleveland by one. After the this pitch, we'll catch you up on the rest of the American League. Darren Fletcher is the pinch hitter, and the pitch is outside. You saw the tie score there. Elsewhere, still tied in Chicago. Milwaukee looking to win another one from Detroit. They're going to be a big double dip in New York. That should be the first out of the inning, but that sun is brutal. 
Everybody's shading their eyes. Nobody makes the play, and it drops for a hit. And Fletcher only got to first. That might cost him a buck or two. It is a tough sun field, Bobby Cox. You're absolutely right. They're going to charge an error on that. That is absolutely asinine. Here's a look. Calls for it. Nobody knows where the ball is. Nobody touches the ball. That is the dumbest error I think I have seen. If you can't see it and nobody knows where it is. All three guys lost it. All three lost it. And they, they guess that it's Blouser's fault, so they give him the air. Well, Smoltz has to pitch around the mistake. Grizzlanek hits it pretty well, but foul. 0 and 1. You're right. Any of the three, had they seen the ball, could have caught it. How can you give the air to one guy? I guess it was closer to him than anybody else. If you lose it in the lights, what do they do? They give him a hit. If you get screened out by a base runner, they give him a hit. The 0 1 pitch. Again, he can't catch up to the fastball. It's 0 2. Smoltz strikeout high is 15. He did that against Montreal on a Sunday a few years ago. He's got 10 of them here. The 0 2 pitch. Double play ball, maybe, if he hit it hard enough. Out at second. Safe at first. They get the fielder's choice, get the first out ball, wasn't it quite hard enough to turn two? And Mike Lansing, the batter. Guess they should give an error on to somebody on that. No, I don't. You've got to assume that you could have made that double play. Go punch the guy out. Not that important. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Runner at first, one out. The pitch. Foul to the screen. 0 and 1. They're getting some better cuts at John now. He's lost a little, I would guess. The strikeouts have gone down. He recorded his seventh in the fourth inning. But the point you made earlier is a very good one. What he is doing is pitching like you're supposed to with a four run lead. He's throwing strike after strike. Those eight other guys are waiting to grab him for you. And he's relieved if the ball's hit. And he's ahead once again, 0 and 2. Nobody's going to get that ball. It's not going to be a shutout. It's not going to be a no hitter. I've already rung up double figures in strikeouts. You got an impressive line score from here on in. It's put the ball in play. Make them put the ball in play. But don't let them hit a pop fly in the short left. It should be an error on Smokes. Got to give one. It's his fault. Fastball high. It's one and two. A splitter here might do him some good if he can make a good pitch on Lansing. Maybe to a left hander but I would think to Lansing who pulls off of it, the slider is one that could get him waving. See what he does. He pops him up here we go again they battle the sun again. Who wants it. Blouser has this one for the second out and pull. everybody was in trouble again. That's a redeemer. That's a redeemer. Lemke had no idea where the ball is. You'll watch him shake his head here. I couldn't see it. See, I couldn't see the ball. Chipper Jones was from the side. Blouser played that well by going side saddle. Watch the glove screen. Shadows. Now he goes a little bit to the side and catches it to the side. That's the only way. For a minute, I thought John was going to make the catch. He thought about going for it. Here's David Segui, who homered earlier. Two years ago, he would have tried to make the catch. And crashed into Blouser and... There would have been a couple of runners on. This is a different version here than what we've watched the last few years. Sagi is one for two. John says it's just that his arm is healthy and he's able to throw his fastball more consistently for strikes. That's a safer line to take. Safer attack. He saw that ball. John crossed up Javi Lopez, who goes to the mound. 
2-0 oh the count. This is not a bad time for a trip to the mound, even if it's just to go out and say, how's the family doing? Is your car running well? What are you going to do with your vacation this winter? And do you get enough tickets for postseason? Because what it does is there is adrenaline pumping through right now. John is a very emotional pitcher. Got a lead. It could be a clincher. It's a special day all the way around. Now it's a chance to kind of back it down a notch. That was a very timely move by Javi Lopez. Two balls, no strikes. The count. Activity for the first time today in the Atlanta bullpen. Greg McMichael is up testing his win. 2 0 pitch. Swung right through it. 2 and 1. It was upstairs. John has one more start, as Don mentioned. I don't know that they'll even think about going nine. Normally they usually go five in that and get about 70 pitches in, 75 pitches, considered a tune-up start. You know you're having a good year though when you go five, it's a tune-up start and you get enough runs and you get another win. Ah, uh, that's another one. Good luck. And everybody's pointing to die. And he's in trouble and he can't hold it. And the runners are at first and third, and the fans can't figure out what's going on here, but they could if they were playing out there. The sun is brutal. That has to be an error because the ball hit his glove. Yeah. I don't think you can argue with that one. No, he got a bead on this one and drifted back over, and he sees the ball all the way right there. But I bet you if you could ask him to do it again, he'd turn the glove over and try to catch it with the glove turned over. That one hit right on the heel, hit in the pocket. So Smoltz is making the pitches, but he's not getting the outs. Second air of the game, end of the inning. It looks like a comedy routine, but there's nothing funny if you're on the left side of the field here. A few more clouds and they're starting to form a little bit would be very helpful. They tell me that the high sky really makes it tough when there are no clouds at all. Well there's nothing to compare it to. There's no depth up there. It's just you're like looking down in the down into a clear pool. You can't tell how deep it is. Oh and away one ball no strikes. At least with clouds you get some sort of contrast. In physics they call it parallax. Well good for them. <laughs> we'll have time to think it through here. One and oh the count. Second and third. Two out. To the screen. Alou today has struck out, walked, and lined hard to center. And Mr. McGriff, Mr. Lemke, Mr. Blouser, Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones, Mr. Grissom, and Mr. Dye are all praying for a ground ball or a strikeout. And Smoltz, after watching the inning, is trying for the strikeout. Popped up right side. McGriff's turn in the barrel. I don't know if he's got to play near the seats. No, he runs out of room. Looked like he saw that one all the way. What you will see on a day like this, if he can pick it up, you'll see a covey of players go after it, even though it's not their neighborhood and not their ball, because you might be able to catch a deflection or you might be able to guy that'll bail them out. So if anything does go in the air, look for four Braves to be around it somewhere. One and two, the count to Alou. Two out, runners at second and third. You see the score. I pop. Smoltz wants it. But Lopez calls him off, makes the catch, and the inning is over. And that is a major league job of pitching there. He never lost his composure. He just got him out. No hits, no runs. Two airs, two left. Bottom of the eighth, three outs away from a championship. The guy is going to pinch hit here for John Smoltz, and the crowd not at all happy with that. But John up over 120 pitches. That has to be the thinking. Dave Leeper is entering the game to pitch for Montreal. And Mike Mordecai knows it's nothing personal. The announcement there were boos. It wasn't boos for Mordecai. It was his pleasure at the move. So Smoltz, eight innings, four hits, two runs. I got him for two walks, ten strikeouts, one home run. And nobody's going to finish the game up. It would appear because there's no action in the bullpen. 
Mordecai fouls the first one back at 2 and 1. Let's hit a few in the air and see how these guys do. Marquise Grissom was on deck. I was just thinking, if the Grissoms have another child, he's yeah. really going to have his work cut 300 out. 300 hits is a lot. The 1 1. Two balls and a strike. Don's on his way to the clubhouse for what we hope will be a post game celebration. Two balls and a strike. That's right in there. Two and two. Looking ahead to the ninth inning. It will be Rodriguez, Guerrero, and San Angelo do for Felipe Alou's club. Leapers 2-2 two -two pitch. Fly ball left field. Rodriguez has no trouble with it at all. One out. Hundred twenty pitches. 120 pitches, 36 balls, so that would be about 84 strikes. Grissom, two out of four, a home run included, a 200 hit season, the first of his career. And his 200th hit was a home run, so he did it with gusto. Fast ball away, one ball, no strikes. Michael is going to try to finish this one up. Breaking ball, swung and missed. If he gets into trouble, of course, Mark Wolers will get the call. Well, they want Greg to test his arm. He pitched a little last night. The 1 1. High and tight, two balls and a strike. 6 to 2, our score. Braves three outs away from another championship. Foul to the screen. This all started in 91. Here's a good question for you. It's not Aflac, but we'll do it anyway. Phil gave me a bonus question. Who's the last brave to get 200 hits for a change in news? 201 for Grissom, a solid single to center. Willie Montanez did it for the Braves. Remember him, the old first baseman back in 1976. Andrew Jones, the batter, he's had a good day. Three out of four. A couple of infield hits, a stolen base. He's driven in a run. Runner at first, one out. Leaper's been up and down throughout the year with Montreal. Started with the Expos, went to AAA, and now is back with them. Out in front, he smokes it foul past third, 0 and 1. 6 2 our score, bottom of the eighth. This all started in 1991, this run of success. Interrupted by the strike. But this is only the first step up the mountain if the Braves win this game. 1 and 1 the count. The other baseball, Toronto and Baltimore tied 4 4 in the seventh inning. The Yankees and Boston 1 1 after three. Aaron Seeley against Ramiro Mendoza in that game. Arizona leads New Orleans 14 7 in NFL football after three. The 2 1 pitch instead the first Marquise back easily. Pat Corrales coaching over at first Jimmy Williams at third. 
Not anybody leaving here today as they normally do when you have a lead late. The 2 1 pitch. 3 and 1 the count. Chipper on deck and McGriff would follow him. it up foul territory it's going to reach the seats I think it does nice catch by a youngster down below three and two the count Hand hitter digs back in. And the 3 2 pitch instead the first runner back. This is game number 155. Seven more to go. Lined with a runner going down the left field line into the corner. Should score Grissom. He's around third, racing for the plate. Andrew Jones, his fourth hit of the day, is second RBI. It's seven to two. Grissom going on the pitch, curveball down, but he went right down and got it. And Chipper Jones, the batter, little insurance, seven to two, the score. This crowd doesn't know what to do. In a way, they want the Braves to keep scoring because that's what it's all about. But in another way, they want the inning to end so we can get to the ninth. Renner at second, one down, one in. Chipper doesn't get a high fastball. Another right-hander in the bullpen for the Expo. Looped into short center field. That's going to drop for it. Here comes Andrew. He will score. It's eight to two. Chipper didn't hit it that hard, but he hit it in a perfect spot. He drives in his 110th run of the year. And the Braves add a little insurance here, and Joe Kerrigan is going to come to the mound. I'll say this for Kerrigan: unlike most pitching coaches. He comes charging out there on the run to talk to his pitcher. Tavo Alvarez is the right hander in the bullpen for Felipe Alou. Big upset in the NFL make the Falcons feel better. Carolina beat San Francisco today, 23 to 7. Here's Fred McGriff. He has bounced out, struck out, popped out, and walked. One ball, no strikes. He got the first out in the inning, then a single, a double, and another single, and two runs of score. Jack Swing stayed inside. Fred out of the batter's box now stands back in. This is the guy Leaper has to get to stay in the game. In fact, even if he gets Fred, he may not stay in the game with a right hand hitter next. Tender comes set. The pitch swung and lined hard, but foul boy that just missed Pat Corrales. 
He got down to his knees just in time. Two and one the count. Bottom of the eighth Braves on top eight two they've out hit him fourteen to four. Well I hope those guys enjoy it it all started in late February and they've been working ever since for this. But remember it's only the first step. Three more hills to climb. Ground a foul into the Atlanta dugout. Boston now leads the Yankees 2 1 in the top of the fourth inning. The information we're getting is a little strange. The Giants beat the Jets 13 6 in New York. Good curveball. McGriff goes down swinging. Second out of the inning. And here comes Alou, and he's going to go to Tavo Alvarez. That's going to be all for Leeper, who went two thirds of an inning, allowed three hits and at least two runs. And the rest will depend on what happens here. He did strike out a batter, and we'll be back right after this. Bo Alvarez recalled from Ottawa on September 2nd. He was 4 and 9 down there with a 4.70 ERA. He pitched better than that with Montreal early in the year. He was one and one, a 3.94 in run average. But he strained a hamstring on May 15th. And that set him back considerably. So he's back up here now. And Javi Lopez will hit against him. He's a portly right hander, I guess is the way you put it. That might not be the way you would put it, that's the way I would put it. He features a fastball, a curve, a change, and a sinker. He's out of Obregon, Mexico. 6'3, 235 at least. 24 years old. Runner at first, two out, two in. A little bit inside, one ball, no strikes. The shadows now lengthening. Over home plate. Ground ball headed for left field. Yet another hit. Chipper stops at second. Javi's third hit of the day. Hopefully these guys are getting it tuned up a little bit. Jermaine Dye, the banner. I know a lot of you like me are disappointed that John Smoltz didn't get to finish this game because he's been such a hero with a great pitching and the three run homer but he threw 120 pitches. He's got one more start but then he's got hopefully a lot more pitching to do in the three playoff series. Oh and won the count. If the two balls hadn't been lost in the sun who knows they might have let him finish the game. Up the middle, Alvarez didn't know he had it, knocked it down, picked it up, threw him out. And the inning is over, so the Braves settle for the two runs. They get him on four hits and they leave two. We go to the ninth inning, three outs away from the clinch. Eight to two. Eight to two as we go to the ninth, our auto zone player of the game. Guess who? <laughs> Has to be John Smoltz. The three run homer is perhaps the biggest part of all that today and here's a look at it. It just kept carrying made it over that wall with ease and that gave the Braves a lead that they have held ever since Greg McMichael on to pitch and shut things down. We couldn't even argue with Glenn Diamond about the AutoZone player today it had to be Smith. Which takes a lot of fun out of it. Rodriguez leads off the ninth. Oh. 
McMichael ready to go to work. 0 oh and 1. The plate is now in shadow and the mound is bathed in sunshine. You also have a pitcher out there who normally gets a lot of ground balls and with the trouble the Braves have had with the pops today. That's good news. 0 oh and 2. Rodriguez 0 for 3. A couple of strikeouts. Coming into today was two of two in the series. A couple of pinch hits, a double and a single. He loops that one into short right field on an 0-2 pitch. So an inauspicious start to the ninth inning. Vladimir Guerrero will be the batter. He is grounded out, lined out, and struck out. All that against John Smoltz, who went eight innings, four hits, two runs. Two walks, ten strikeouts, one homer. That by David Segui, who, unless the Braves totally collapse here, will be 23 and 8 on the year. Guerrero stands in. He had a home run to the off field last night. A little bit outside, 1 0. Mack again ready. Lined hard but fouled on the third base line. One and one the count. One and one the count. Guerrero, the kid that hit 360 in double A ball this year. 19 homers, 78 RBI, 17 stolen bases. Strike outside corner. Pirates keep rolling. That'll be 11 in a row if they hold on. Houston is just Houston. You've got a problem. New York and Philadelphia 2-2. Cincinnati in the first of two beat the Cards. The one-two pitch. Little chopper past the mound. A tough play. Can Chipper make it? He'll be too late. Infield hit. Two on. Nobody out. It's not over yet. Now the two extra runs that came in the ninth have added significance. Looking down in the Atlanta bullpen, Eddie Perez is getting up. And that means Mark Wallers is going to be getting up as well. A bloop and an infield hit on a ground ball. Have McMichael in trouble. He wishes he had the 0 2 pitch back to Rodriguez to start the inning. No, it's not going to be Wallers. It's going to be Balicki and Hartford. Foul to the screen, 0 and 1. I don't know how the hitters see the ball. It's almost impossible to see it from up here now with the shadows around home plate. Baltimore trying to stay alive. They're winning. The Yankees were losing at last report. And Boston has added to its lead. It's a four game New York lead going into the day's play. Change of pace. He didn't get a one and two. Eight to Atlanta, two on, nobody out. Ninth inning. FP San Angelo, one out of three today. Lenny Webster waits on deck. A little looping pop fly on a one-two pitch. That's in for a hit, and the bases are loaded with nobody out. And the crowd's impatience. Is acute and fairness to McMichael, not one ball has been hit hard, but they've all had eyes. Webster bats with the bases loaded, nobody out. You're three hitters away if you want to look at it that way of bringing the potential tying run to the plate. A home run here makes it eight to six, and then you start over with nobody on or out. That's the worst case scenario.
Lenny Webster has struck out, singled and scored, and grounded short. A ground ball here would be nice. Strike called, fastball inside corner, 0 and 1. Our runner at every base, nobody out. 0 oh and 2. Webster can't believe that one. Max been in this spot a couple of times in this inning. Way ahead on the count. Whoa, that was close. That looked like a better pitch than strike two. A ball and two strikes. Bobby agrees with me. The one two pitch. Two balls, two strikes. Two balls, two strikes to count. Bases loaded, nobody out the pitch. A little squibber back to the mound. Go home, Mac. Out there. Go to first, Javi. Out there. Second and third, two out. A one, two, three, double play. Talk about a pitcher's best friend. That was it. With a catcher running and Webster fell down getting out of the box, that made it really easy for Lopez. Cliff Floyd is the last hope for Montreal. He pinch hits for Alvarez. See how neat that locker room looks? Give it about five minutes, folks. Bobby Cox's office is up to the left there, and the training room's behind it. Oh, and one. They are ready to charge the field. The 0 1 pitch. Going inside, a ball and a strike. away from the division title. Maybe. Let's just watch. No sense of the dramatic there, Mac. Two and two, the count. Everybody on their feet. September 22nd. The 2 2 pitch. Still 2 and 2. Two balls, two strikes. Here we go again. <laughs> Floyd calls time. It's all right, we got plenty of time, Cliff. For... 
Two and two with two out and two on. And the division title on the line. Again, Floyd steps up. Lopez and McMichael having trouble getting together. So Hobby goes to the mound. By the way, John Smoltz's win ties Necro for the Atlanta record of 23. John would be 13 and 3 at home. Out of play again. Braves will be 55 and 25 at home. They won seven of their last eight games here. We told you about Marquise Grissom and the 200 hits and Smoltz. With the strikeouts, set a new Brave record. John wound up with 272 with one start to go. Here we go again. Phase one is complete. It's not the wild celebration we've seen in the past, and the reason for that is these fellows now expect it. They're expected to win, and they expect to win, and they've taken the first step up the mountain. They have three more steps to try to take. But the Atlanta Braves are in the playoffs and now make their way off the field. And John Smoltz out there in the middle of it. What a game he had. A very subdued celebration, but as I said, that's understandable here. McMichael and Smoltz laughing and talking with one another as they come off the field. And a standing ovation from a capacity crowd of 49,238. We're going to keep it right here. Don Sutton standing by in the clubhouse. And in just a minute, you're going to see that nice, neat clubhouse That's turned into a slum. That's Bill Akery who does such a great job as our traveling secretary. Probably the most valuable unsung hero on this team, by the way. John Sherholtz and Stan Caspin, I'm sure, are already in the clubhouse. Mark Rollers makes his way up the stairs, and now the party begins. 8 15 and 2 for the Braves, 2 7 and 1 for the Expos. If you care anything about the totals, I personally don't. And Don Sutton is standing by in the locker room. Donald? All right, Skip, thank you very much. Our hero today. I don't know that a storybook year could have a better inning than today for you. Well, it was amazing. I mean, uh, it all started with two outs, and really without Blauser and Lemke working their way on base. And it's just one of those, it's been one of those years, one of those games, and. Uh, I'm just glad we won it today and some guys can get some rest. When you started this year, obviously there's a lot on the line for you. People want to talk about free agency. Was that in the front of your mind, the back of your mind? And did you have any goals coming out of spring training? You know, I just knew in spring training, yeah, you know, some guys uh, that this was going to be my year just because I was healthy. And uh, I really didn't think one bit about the contract, one bit about anything other than just getting better. I felt like I could get better and live up to some of the high expectations. We have uh, some stuff, some film of some of your game today watch this strikeout run us through this you might want to do this a little bit later on <laughs> as we go to it in three two one well well you, was, you set a re it was a record this year obviously to surpass Phil Necro who's an icon here in Atlanta had to make it something special it was uh, you know I, I think that this year has been obviously a year of milestones for me but I couldn't have done it with a lot of help from teammates obviously and and just 
the confidence that every time I go out there, they felt that, that I was going to win for the first time in my career. And uh, I felt like I belonged in the positions that I was in. And to get strikeouts and certain records that really I didn't know much about coming into this year, uh, it was a feather in the cap, and I'll take it. But the thing that's the most important to this club, obviously, is going on and taking each level and trying to repeat. With every win that you got, you were pushed more out in front. You were the guy that was called the go-to guy. Some guys don't want that responsibility, but you seem to respond well to it. Well, I think I put myself in a position where, uh, you know, in the past with injuries and certain things that I didn't, for personally, couldn't get better. And I think now I felt that during the streak, you know, it happened so quick, but I felt I still could get better. And, and I didn't play four games down the road or play four batters down the road. I went pitch to pitch into the inning. And I learned a lot more being healthy than I than the, than those years when I was hurt and, and was limited to things I could do. This year, I think there are a lot of people who would say and would think that it may be a better year than the past because you guys had so much adversity to overcome. It has not been an easy year for the Braves. No, it has, and this felt like this has been a road trip uh, year. You know, we feel like we've been on the road all year with the Olympics, with the injuries. Some, you know, we haven't had much controversy, but we had some things to overcome. A lot of young guys coming in. John Sherholtz kept us in a winning path by adding some guys. And, you know, in this day and age, to win five straight championships is a tribute to the organization and the players. And, uh, you know, I'm just happy now that we're getting guys healthy like Avery. He's going to be a huge plus in the playoffs. I know you want to get over and celebrate with your friends. Thanks, a John. picture year. Congratulations. Should be the Cy Young. Hopefully that, that'll be next for you. Thank you very much. All right, Skip, let's go back up to you while we get some more guests. Okay, Dan, thanks very much. Here are your uh, line scored. Atlanta 8-15 and 2 with 10 left. Montreal 2-7 and 1 with 7 less. John Smoltz, the winner, is 23 and 8. Uh, Jeff Facero is the losing record. His or pitcher, rather, his record goes to 15 and 10. Time of the game, approximately 3 hours and 12 minutes. 49,238 paid to see it. Let's go back to Don. Here he will get you. All right. Bobby Cox, congratulations. Step one. You got two Thanks, more Ron. to go, but this has got to feel good for you. Feels great. Five in a row. We've been here before, so you know, we were hoping to close this thing out a few days ago and just couldn't do it. But club's hitting on all cylinders again, and uh, we're tickled pink to do this. Five times is tough to do, and these guys can grind it out with the best of them. And, a week in advance of the playoffs should help us a little bit, get straightened out some more. You talked to a lot of people, Bobby. They think this may have been your best year because you did not have all eight cylinders clicking all year. No. You had injuries. You had a lot of things that could have gone wrong, but you kept them right there. Well, we can grind it out with the best of them, I think, Don, and that's what we are, grinding ball club, and uh, and we're pretty darn good. And, uh, you know, I'm very proud of the team. They, they never let – they bend a little bit, but they never break. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to the playoffs, and we need to get – get uh, this next week out of the way and we should have everybody clicking real good. Now what you got in mind this week? You're going to kind of set up things for the first round? We'll set them up and uh, you know we can't divulge what we're doing right now because we need to meet with the players first and uh, we'll start setting things up. A lot of things have happened this year. There was the big lead and there was losing a few. Can you point to one day where I know how you are. Skip used to drive you crazy by saying what's the magic number. Yeah, yeah. But can you point to maybe one game, one play, or one time when you figured, yeah, this is what we needed? Well, Tommy Glavin always uh, appears in my mind to come up with a big pitch game. Uh, you know, uh, he's all, you know, we needed a game in New York. He gave it to us. And um, every time we need one, it's always Tommy's involved in it, I think. Step one of the three. Bobby, go enjoy it with the Thanks, guys. Don. Thank you very much. All right, Skip. Okay, Dan, thank you very much. We now know, as the Braves are the National League East champions, that the first division series game will be Wednesday, October 2nd, away. Thursday, October 3rd, will be away. And then we'll be home for game three on Saturday, October 5th. Sunday the 6th, Monday the 7th, if necessary, in the three out of five series. Joe Simpson is in the clubhouse as well, and he's going to visit with Chipper Joe. Yeah, we're swimming down here, Skip, but uh, Chipper Jones joins us. Congratulations. Uh, second time even sweeter? It is. It was a lot. <laughs> it was definitely a lot harder this time around, but uh, just as sweet as it was last year. <laughs> Hopefully we can do this uh, three more times this year. Whoever that is, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Who else but Steve Avery. But a great year for you. I mean, uh, tremendous numbers, 110 RBIs now with the RBI today knowing that you were an integral part of all this had to be special too. Well it really is. I mean uh, uh, just being able to be a part and, and play with the guys that, that we have on this ball club 
Uh, just being able to contribute as much as I did this year is a tremendous feeling, tremendous honor, and, and uh, we're going to try and bring back another championship. <laughs> All right, Skip, we've probably got a uh, uh, couple more guys to talk to if we can swim through this. Now back up to you. What a horrible waste of good booze. But that's baseball. 8-2, the Braves clinch the Eastern Division title back after this.